All right, this is the last lesson in um, Unit 3. Let's see where we've been. So this week, you learned about defining variables, um, both in racket code and in algebra. And you also learned about using definitions to add images to your video game. Uh, being able to define values in a programming language is a powerful tool that allows programmers to simplify their code and make it more readable and maintainable. Today, you'll learn how to define your own functions to control the racket language even more. So defining a value, which is what we did with the define word, is helpful when a program has lots of identical expressions. Sometimes, however, a program has expressions that aren't identical, they're just very similar. A program that has 50 solid green triangles can be simplified by defining a single value as long as they're all the same size. Right? So that's what we learned about when we learned about define. But what if a program has 50 green triangles that are different sizes? So think about the image functions we've already used, like star and circle. They take inputs and produce images. So we might want a green triangle function that takes the size of an input and produces a green triangle. But the programming language doesn't provide this function, but it does let you provide your own functions. So we can want to define our own function, let's call it GT for green triangle, that takes in a number and produces a solid green triangle of whatever size. So GT10 would be a shortcut for triangle 10, solid green. GT20, triangle 20, solid green. See how that's working? So we want, we're going to make our own shortcut, and it's not just a define because Defined, they were all the same. This one actually takes in a number and then uses that number to call the, the triangle function. So let's see how we do that. Problems that require a function definition can be phrased as word problems. right? So in math we hear about word problems, but now that we're computer programmers, um, word problems are just fun programming problems. So here's a, here's a problem. Define a function gt, which takes in a number and produces a solid green triangle of the given size. Fortunately, we can follow steps to define functions from word problems. So let's work through the steps with this gt problem. So step one is write the contract. You've already learned about contracts, and this is the first step in defining any function. So remember that contracts summarize three pieces of essential information. The name, so we know what that is, right? So it's GT, they, they told us. The domain, well, they told us that the, um, the GT function should take in a number. And the range, what is it supposed to produce? Um, in this case, they said it's supposed to produce an image. So here's the GT contract written as, um, or the, the GT word problem written as a, as a contract. Um, and remember that in the contract, it starts as a, a name, it has a semicolon, and a number, and then an arrow, and then the, or the, sorry, the uh, domain, and then an arrow, and then the range. And you'll notice this is a comment. You know, it starts with a semicolon, so it's not actually executable racket code. Um, it's, 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 it's a comment. It's for people to read, not the computer will tell the computer how to do things a little bit differently. So contracts are for people. So word problems are going to always tell us um, clues as to the name, domain, and range of the function. Sometimes they, they hide it a little bit, but when you break it down um, into simple steps and you're looking for those three pieces of information, you can almost always find it. So be sure to read the problem carefully. Some word problems will describe functions that take multiple inputs in their domain, right? And we've seen those where um, there's multiple inputs um, or different types. So open your workbook to page 9 where it says fast functions and write the contract for the GT function. So pause now and do that. Okay, so step 2, remember we're doing our step for our um, how to write a program based on a word problem. Step 1 was to make a contract. Step two, um, it's always a good idea to think through a few examples before you actually define your function. 
Examples show how the shortcut is going to be used. This um, uh, programming language that we're using um, in Racket provides a special, a special function called example, in all caps, which helps you write down how the function is used and what it should compute. So here's a couple of examples of example. So we want our GT function. We're just going to call it GT50. And then that should produce the same thing. So GT50, if we, if we write GT correctly, then GT50 should make the same thing as this. Right? It's just a, it's a shortcut. And so that's what we want to do. And here's another example. GT100 should produce this. So these examples tell the computer that writing GT50 yep, should be the same as those. Um, so the word problems told us that the examples must use the name GT and must produce solid green triangles. Right? That, that's what it gave us. So um, in your workbook, write your own two examples for this function. So you can't use these exactly, uh, but make something a little bit different, but that are valid examples of how to use the GT function. GT function. Um, so pause now and do that. Okay, so we, use, we often write several examples for our functions. And they're, a, they're a good way to think through. So, so they're good documentation for when we or somebody else comes and looks at our code later, but they're also great ways to think through the problem is to, to figure out how we're, we want to, to write our function. So the, the one thing to look for is to look in our examples, what can change? So in this example, um, GT is always the same, because that's the name of our function. And we only have one other part, right? The domain is just one number, and it can change. And so here they've, they've, um, they've shown that, that size. The size of the triangle is what can change. And, and so... Um, so looking at what can change helps us yeah, look and see that's the size. So um, in this example, they circled, they circled what can change, and they, they labeled it. They named it size. So um, I guess in your workbook, um, circle the examples that you wrote. Uh, circle the things that can change and label it size. So pause for a second and do that. OK. So that was step two. So step one was to write a contract. Step two was to write an examples. Now we're ready to define the function. So after writing the contract, two examples, and, the, and we labeled the circles, right? We said, said um, what changed and gave that a name. Um, now we can actually write the function. So we copy everything that stays the same uh, from our examples, and then we'll... Um, We'll use that label that we gave um, to, to, to be the um, argument to our function, to be the parameters that are going to change our function. So we just copy down our example line, and we change example to define. And we use our label that we gave to this, and we call it size. And then we just write down the body of the function copying one of our examples, and the same thing. Instead of a number, we put our variable size. So that's going to be our how we change our one of our examples into our actual function. So on your, your page, uh, define the, v, the, the GT function, just like I did on the previous screen. Um, and in fact, I will... Um, uh, flip back here. So, so first, on your paper, go ahead and write down the definition for GT, uh, the define. Write down this define line. Pause and do that. Okay. Now, take the um, definition that you just made and type that into the definition area of Racket. Uh, and then click Run. And remember, that doesn't do anything yet, right? You just defined it, um, and then we can use it. So I'm going to do that in mine, too. So in fact, I'll do all the parts. 
So first we want our contract. Um, the name of our function is gt. And it takes a number as its domain. And it produces um, an image as a range. And let's see. Next we had examples. So example. I'll have to go back and look and see how to use an example. All right. Example GT 100. All right. Now I, now I have to do what that produces. That produces a triangle of 100 solid green because that's what the problem told us to do. All right. Let's make another one. GT. Let's make a little tiny one. Four. I'm just going to line that up. Oops. Triangle. Four. Okay. Now. What they told us to do is we copy this line. Just won't copy one of our examples. I'm going to change the word example to define. And then we called these things here. We called it the size. So that's what changes. What changes between these is the size. Oops, I have a typo. T R I A N G. Then we got to do size here. All right, if I did all that, then when I run it, I shouldn't get any errors. Oh, or the example is above the definition. Well, that's what the way they told us to do it. Um, so if you get that same thing, I'm going to cut that and just put it right here. Hit run again. I was wondering about that. Yeah, so it's happy. So I defined it, and then I can use it. Um, so all of these are just definitions. So let's now, I should be able to say GT. GT. 100. I get 100 triangle. So my GT function worked. Um, what happens if I mess up one of the um, examples? So this doesn't match anymore, right? GT40 is not supposed to do a triangle 4. Good. Example check. For GT40 at line 4, expected triangle 4. All right. Cool. So that's cool. I'll put that back. But I am curious as to why... Let's see. Click run. Yeah, yeah, I think this, this, um, you have to have the define first. So even though we, even though in our process we're making the examples first, in our code it looks like define has to, to actually appear first in our file. So that's no problem. All right, so these steps that we just did are known as the design recipe. And that's something we'll use um, from now on when we talk about how to, um, to do these problems. Uh, it's a powerful tool for defining functions based on word problems. Another word for word problems is requirements. So in my job, I talk to people all the time about requirements, uh, which is what they want the program to do because they know how the business runs. Um, and I don't. I, I write programs for them. Um, that's my job, is to help them by writing programs that do things that they want to do. And so they give me the word problem or the requirements, and then I write the um, functions uh, based on those requirements. So here's something practice for you. Write a function BC, which takes in a number and produces a solid blue circle of a given size. Um, so. Um, it, it, 
I'm going to explain this and then you can pause. So in your workbook, which is you're still on page 9, fill out the contract for this function BC. And then after you've done that, write two examples for this function BC. And here are some, some questions to help you um, remember the different parts of the design recipe. Um, look at those two examples and circle the parts that are changeable. And then give them a good variable name. Label them with a name. Um, and then write the function definition for those examples. All right, so I'm going to pause now, and you can, or you pause now and do that, and I'll leave this screen up. Okay, great. Does yours look something like this? It should look something a little bit like this. All right, here's the next one. Write a function dot, which takes a color and produces a, it takes in a color, and it's going to produce a solid circle of the given color with a radius of 20. So pause now and do all of these parts on page 9. Okay. Did yours look something like this? It should look something like this takes in a string, which is the color, right? Produces an image. Uh, the radius was always 15. The thing that changed was the color. So you've seen, you've seen a lot of functions defined in Racket. So for example, here's one that defines a function called f that takes in a variable x and produces x plus 1. So the name of this function is f. So just tell by the position in the parentheses, right? It's not as uh, quite as easy as looking at these. But everything, if you look at it, it's in the same place based on the parentheses. So I can tell. What's the name of this function? It's f. How many variables does it take? It takes one variable. What's the name of that variable? It's the variable x. What does this function do to x? So we have to look in these parentheses, and it adds 1. So now you pause and define a function g, which takes in a variable q and multiplies it by 20. Um, just do that on the same page in your workbook. To find a, it should look a lot like this. It's a function called g, named g, takes in a variable q and multiplies by 20. So pause now and do that. All right, great. So to translate these functions into algebra, we do something similar to what we did with the values. So here's the same function f that was on the previous screen, but in algebra syntax. So the function f takes a variable x and it adds 1 to it. So now I'll take your function g and translate it into algebra. And then take write a new function h that takes in a variable x and divides it by 2. So do that both ways. Do it um, as a racket function. Just do this on the same page. Um, a racket function named h that takes in a variable x and divides it by 2. And then translate that function into an algebra format. So pause now and do that. Okay. Now, last, last thing of today is there are some other functions on page 38 of your workbook. I think I have that going. Let's see. Yep, so on page 38, um, previously you did this part with the, the definitions where you took racket code and turned it into algebra. Now, um, I don't remember if you did that or not. So, so whatever's left to do on page 38, um, do that, and um, then you can be done.